Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand. Welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Friday, August 23, 2024, a little after 3.15 p.m. Eastern. We're having a reverse aging health call and all the rest uh, tonight a little after 9.15 p.m., because some of you may know we're, we're building, we're, we just began building facilitators and trainers and, um, and the best sources for the people that come to these meditations and the TFCC calls that you wouldn't be coming to these calls and participating if you were not aware, at least to a certain extent. How do we, how do we really value life? Isn't it interesting because we're all experiencing it different ways? Do, and I believe that when people are confronted with, oh, life-threatening, right? Or something happens that they forbid at least or maybe longer, they stop for a moment and say how grateful they are to be alive. It may be something where you see someone or a relative that's in the process of leaving the body. And you, you begin to like reflect I know we all do it. You reflect. And it's, do you do it while they're still in body? I think more so we're, we're doing what we can to comfort them. I, I don't think we're thinking in our direction at that point. We're, we're doing what we can to comfort them and we're, we're thinking about feeling you know, they're going to be gone. And it's interesting because most of us take it for granted. The only time we don't take it for granted, like I've said, let's say you're traveling along in your vehicle, right? And out of the clear blue, come in the opposite direction. Let's say it's a two-laner, right? And you're just doing what you do, traveling along the road. Now, this other being, for whatever reason, almost sideswipes you. I mean, you can feel the, the wind, the, 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 the force, of them being so close, coming by so fast. And your stomach drops, and you have this rush of fear, and, and, and a lot of the times you say to yourself, I was very fortunate that I wasn't injured or harmed or had to leave the body prematurely. When we, uh, a quote from Osho, looking at a sunset, just for a second, you forget your separateness. You are the sunset. That is the moment when we feel the beauty of it. But the moment you say that it is a beautiful sunset, hey, look, you know, look, and look at that beautiful sunset, you are no longer feeling it. You have come back to your separate, enclosed entity of the ego. You see how that works? And you can see why so many of us have been programmed and trained to, to, to be that way. We, it's interesting because we don't, we kind of say yes, you know, I know it's temporary. Well, we have so many things going on with ourselves that we just don't, we don't pay attention to it.
We do know, I believe all of us know this, it is certain that one day we're going to leave the body. You know, at that, that will arrive at our door. Most, see, right now, it's a, it's always seems to be a great surprise for most of us, right? One minute they're there, the next minute they're gone. Have you ever said, I was just talking with them a couple of days ago. Now they're gone. We don't usually have any warnings. So you could do, you could say, you stop all your previous social habits, let down your guard, and allow others to see and know the real, the real being you are. We all can learn how to open our hearts with anyone we meet. Now this means learning how to let love in and share this brilliant light that we have inside of us with them. They have the same light in them. You have no idea how it may change their life or yours for the better. And this is something we don't try. This is something we just do. And who knows? They could be your last opportunity to love. It's so vitally important that we seize this precious life. We know that death will be arriving on its own time schedule and not according to anyone's plans. One minute your child is alive, the next minute they are gone. This is the basic fact about this life. It ends. It's, you know, and when we, when we have celestial chambers on this planet and people are using them, Yet, but you could be three, four, five thousand years and stay a young woman, young man, but you have all the life experience. But eventually, you're going to say, oh, it's time for me to move on. You will, I guarantee you. And you, but of course, you will have learned so much more, experienced so much more than these segmented, broken up lives with no connection and, and no memory of them, which it will, that will change. But you're still going to say, eventually, one day, that's, that's time for me to leave this body. I, I, you know, I've, I've really covered what I wanted to cover. I've discovered who and what I am. Uh, I'm from the heart mind. I've mastered the ego mind. I've mastered my thoughts and I am in the deepest of deepest, deepest gratitude for all of it. And you lay down, you leave the body. No trauma. Say, none of that. Doesn't that make sense, though? Everything's been twisted with this civilization. A lot of us know that. But it, it always comes back to what? You. We're not talking about the ego mind you. We're talking about the heart mind you. Now, when we say to ourselves, I know I'm going to leave this body one day, right? It, it, it helps us to focus on the now more. And we begin to realize that, you know, this is all I have. This is all I'll ever have is the now. This very moment I am in, I will have that as long as I choose. Then every moment when we accept that, every moment of our lives become emotionally rich, and spiritually juicy, 
and we discover a sweet reverence for life and stop taking every breath for granted. Because you know what? The majority of the people on this planet do exactly that. They take every breath for granted. And we've, we've said this to ourselves, and you've heard other people say it, uh, at le- this lifetime. Uh, a quote from Osho, the greatest wisdom to keep in the parade of your life is that this too shall pass. Always does. Unless you hold on to it. Before you get out of bed each morning, Sit and feel the reality of impermanence. Do it for about 10 minutes. Feel how everything is impermanent. Feel this deep truth in your bones. Nothing and no one in this world is going to remain here forever. Let it penetrate your head, your heart, in your gut. This is a very ancient, ancient, ancient meditation practice. And doing it for three weeks in a row will transform your life in the most amazing ways. Before you get out of bed each morning, sit and feel the reality of impermanence. Roughly 10 minutes or so. I do it for 9 minutes. Feel how everything is impermanent. And then you feel it deep. You feel that it's a deep truth in your bones. Nothing and no one in this world is going to remain here forever. Let it saturate, flood, and permeate your, your head, your heart, and your gut. This meditation is tens of thousands of years old. There is a deep emotional and spiritual release when we realize how everything is impermanent. Notice how you become different when you realize everything around you will one day be gone. Remain aware of the impermanence of everything throughout your day. And you will discover the greatest freedom rising within you. You will naturally start tapping into your deepest connection to that divine essence which continues after this body is gone. When this occurs by itself, you will always be appreciating this incredible, deeply and eternal loving of existence. Accepting our physical mortality is one of the greatest spiritual practices we can take on. As you embrace the fact that nothing is permanent in this world. Nothing. A sacred hum- humility takes over. The over-demanding ego is actually embarrassed as it sees the futility of its super-important plans. Only through this humble approach to existence can we find stillness, spiritual freedom, and enlightenment. All other humble spiritual paths have some sneaky ego still hiding and holding on in the background. Another quote from Osho, misery 
This is something I take all the time with myself. Misery nourishes your ego. That's why you, you see so many miserable people in this world. The basic central point is the ego. Death, as they call it on this planet, is the most fierce and deeply penetrating spiritual teacher that we can have. It will not let our ego escape alive. Death will always be waiting around the next corner, ready to wipe your entire life clean. Death will remove all material possessions from you, all wounds, all people, all your financial problems and future plans. It is guaranteed that one day everything will be removed from your grasp. And I mean absolutely everything. No matter how safe we think we are, this hard truth will remain, perhaps because it has the most profound purpose for our spiritual evolution. Death forces us to remain awake. We must always appreciate this human life we are given. We have to find reverence. Otherwise, we suffer. Knowing how very fragile this life is, we become kind to everything that is alive. By remembering our mortality, we are not so quick to getting angry at our loved ones, nor become distant, judgmental, or critical with them. We tend to forgive everyone who has wronged us more quickly and return to loving the real heart and soul connection that we do have. With the awareness that death is approaching, we become more gentle on ourselves, instantly dropping any hard, heavy energy that we may be carrying. We tend to deal with any leftover skeletons hiding in our closet and embrace those things we are avoiding. We remember that we came here to heal ourselves. And so we stop protecting our hearts from opening up to others. We become radically honest with ourselves and others because we just never know when it's our turn to go. So this coming week, or whenever you choose, I invite you to do something truly radical. Share with those who you are still with, who are still with you today, how you honestly feel. Maybe challenging, yet tell them what is going on inside you. Reveal everything. Clear off your emotional plate. Be free to say anything you cannot speak about or say. You just don't know when your best friends family member or child will die, do you? Let them know how much you actually love them. Rise above any social games you are playing. Stop being afraid of being ridiculed or getting rejected. Take the risk to celebrate your lives and enjoy your short, precious time here together. You truly don't know when it is going to come to a quick end. Man has lost one quality. The quality of zestfulness. And without zest, what is life? Just waiting for death? It can't be anything else. Only with zest do you live. Otherwise, you vegetate, Osho. 
How many people have you come across lately that are zestful? Genuinely, not that put on mass crap, but just genuinely zestful. Now you know what? what you, now you say this. I'm gonna I'm gonna say something here. And when you do this, most people run or push in the corner in a closet. They don't care for this. They they don't. There's only one thing you can do to transcend death. Embrace it. Remember I have said, die every day of your life so you can be reborn? Well, it's figuratively. It doesn't mean literally. With welcoming it fully, you will eventually find your way to real inner peace. This acceptance does not mean to start taking more ap apathetic actions in your life. This is about finding more reverence in everything. Everything is sacred. When you discover this tremendous appreciation for the simple things, like this breath that is still flowing through your lungs, you'll see the fear of living and dying quickly dissolves. If and when we can fully embrace death, we can totally live life. When you have a deep reverence for this life, you naturally take advantage of every moment to feel that you are alive. You finally arrive into this precious now moment of your life where all the puzzle pieces fit in and everything comes to perfection. You can truly rest here. This is the only place. You can let go of it all and fall into resonance with your true spiritual nature. Take this moment to feel into this spiritual essence inside your body. Feel that energy that will remain when your body is gone. Can you feel this eternal energy? The infinite self is here. And it can find... and, and if you can find it and reconnect to it all day, you'll soon realize that heaven is already here now. You, in that body, are the heaven. You are the kingdom of God. You are the God. You are source creator. You're all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. The spiritual effervescence will expand in you and send bubbles of light, filled joy into your heart. Open your life to these bubbles and you wonder why you were pretending to be so worried, fearful, and concerned about everything in your life. The greatest courage is to drop the mind aside. The bravest man or woman is who can see the world without the barrier of the mind, just as it is. It is tremendously different, utterly beautiful. There is nobody who is inferior, and there is nobody who is superior. There are no distinctions. 
social. This is their world. This is the earth that all of us collectively are transforming into. This is new earth. There aren't going to be those better than you. Period. Another technique to realize that you are an infinite being who will never die. You wear a suit, right? New suit. Like it. Feels good, comfortable. Looks good. Feel good when you put it on. Then after a while, it gets old, right? Gets old, worn. Now, you've really gotten attached to this suit. And you, you kinda, you're, you're kind of bothered by the fact that you're going to have to let it go. Uh, it just doesn't have the spark it once had. Can't fix it. It's just too worn. So you eventually release the suit. You let it go. And you don't do it full, you know, wholeheartedly. You do it because you need a new suit. And then you finally let it go and you get a new suit and you're full of joy again. That's what these bodies are. Can you feel this eternal energy? The infinite self is here. And when you find it and reconnect to it all day, you soon realize that heaven is already here now. Open your life to these bubbles and you wonder why you were pretending to be so worried, cheerful, and concerned about everything in your life. You're not going to die ever. That's the real you. That's the real all of us. I've done this several times. Okay. At first, the first time I did it, it wasn't, it wasn't comfortable. Okay. We all have these fears, so to speak. But you pretend you just died. Breathe in this moment as if this was your very last breath. Lay your body down on the bed and imagine that this is your final moment of life. You are breathing your last breaths of life. And soon there will be no more. View all the important scenes from your life and see what truly matters. Your body will, of course, continue to breathe for you. Let the air enter as slowly and deeply as possible. Fall into the quiet valley after every exaltation for as long and deep as you can. After a few minutes of reviewing your life, stop all mind-body activity and relax into the deepest point of stillness that you can find. Follow. Choose to follow these ancient meditations for this week coming up. And you'll find a sense of completion with your past and a deeper acceptance of your future. The more you practice them, the better your life will become. You will find that there is no more anxiety about anything or anyone anymore. You'll realize that there is only this moment of life. And this very precious moment 
is all that we have. So have fun. Be playful. And remember, you are an eternal being who will never, ever die. So do not take anything of this world too seriously. This single intention will allow you to totally enjoy your entire human life journey while it's still here. I'll join you in the meditation. I'll return to close this out.
Take an easy and slow breath in through the nose. And an easy and slow breath out from the mouth. Remain still, relaxed into the body, focus on the breath rising and falling. Celebrate your life. This life that you have been given is a very, very, very sacred thing. There are so many wonderful reasons to celebrate. One of the best reasons is that you are the co-creator and main manifester behind it all. Your thoughts are designing your entire reality in each millisecond. So think about what you want and stop thinking about what you don't want. Let yourself play, dance, sing, make love, enjoy being alive today. Scream out a big yes to yourself because you are the party. That's right. Without you, there is no party. There is no dazzling, radiant main attraction to admire and bask in. No matter what those negative voices say, always remember this one little fact. The more often you celebrate you and appreciate every precious day of this life, the bigger your welcome home party will be at the very end. I'm getting everyone prepared for the moment you arrive. You can let it all hang out. Get ready for the greatest party of the century. The good times have just begun. Unplug from the matrix. Unravel yourself by letting go of the desires, attachments, and aversions inside your mind. Let go of everything that you can think about in this world, in this universe, and in your life. The matrix is your mind. Your mind is the matrix. Unplug yourself by thinking nothing. Just be empty of all thoughts. Ironically, this is where the only real freedom is found. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night the following morning. We'll return here tonight, a little after 9.15 p.m. Eastern, to continue our reverse aging health call and all the rest. And Saturday, August 24, 2024, around 3.15 p.m. Eastern, to continue our global guided meditation call. Be gentle, kind, generous, humble, with yourself at all times, being the highest of the highest, high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, eternal gratitude at all times. No matter what's going on within you or outside of you, open your heart. Allow the magic to flow in. Mm-hmm.